Right, so let's now try to solve some problems from chapter 10 and 11. Um, so we haven't done much from chapter 10, just a small part. So similarly, we're just going to be solving one problem from chapter 10 and there's no assignments from 10. There will be some problems to do from 11, but none from 10. So the problem we're going to be doing from chapter 10 is number three. So let's start so chapter 10, number three. And so what we have is a production function. Remember, what we know about production function. We know that y is a function of capital and number of words. And so far we've just kept it as this. We haven't really looked into the functional form, the technology and what that might be. But now in the problems, we're going to be looking at some actual production functions. So what we have in chapter, uh, question number three is this y is equals to k plus 2n. That's our technology. So what that basically means that every time we increase capital by one, output increases by one. Every time we increase the number of workers by one, output increases by two. And, you know, increase or decrease, both are apt to. So this is our technology. In first part, what we have is the capital stock in the economy is 10. And we have 20 workers. What is the value of Y? So, I mean, mathematically, you guys, you all will be able to do this. I mean, you guys have a simple linear function. The values of K and N is given find the value of y. That's pretty straightforward. That you guys could have been, could have done this five, ten years ago even in school. Uh, so whenever you come across a simple, very easy problem like this, uh, the reason I'm doing this is for you for you guys to talk about the economic implications. Not to solve a difficult problem, but to understand the economic implications of what's going on. So basically what we have here is that we have a specific type of technology which takes inputs, which is capital and workers, and gives us an output, which is you know, Y. And the inputs that we have in the economy right now is that we have 10 units of capital. This can be anything. This can be, we have 10 factories, we have 10 laptops, we have 10 cars, and we have 20 workers who are working with this cap. And if, if these are the resources that we have, how much output can the economy produce? That's what we're trying to find. And that will be pretty straightforward, 10 plus two times 20, which is 50. So working with 20, workers and 10 units of capital, this economy can produce 50 units of hours. Okay, that's the first part. Second part, part B. K and N are tripled. What happens to Y? Okay, if K and N are tripled, so let's call this K prime is 30 and N prime is 60. And so what happens to Y? Okay, so what has happened is in this economy, the capital stock has suddenly gone up and the number of workers have also suddenly gone up. Now it's not realistic to expect things will suddenly increase threefold. That will never, almost never happen. But you can think that suddenly population, let's say there has been a lot of immigration or a lot of refugees coming in or a sudden boom in the population growth rate for whatever reason, and population has suddenly increased by 4% or 5% instead of the expected 1%. And suddenly there has been, you know, technological advancement or whatever, and our capital stock has also increased by 20%. So over here, we're talking about uh, tripling of resources, 200% increase. That's not realistic. 
but k and n increases all the time. And what we're trying to figure out in this question is what will happen if, if, if that happened, if resources increase. So y prime will be how much? 30 plus, same equation, two times n, which is 60, so 150, okay? So now look at what happened. Our resources, k and n, tripled. And as a result, our output, y, has also tripled. It used to be 50, now it's 150. So what can we say about this technology that we have, this production function, y equals to k plus 2n? This exhibits constant returns to scale. If we double the resources, output will double. If we triple the resources, output will triple. If we half the resources, output will half. Okay, that's part B. Part C is, how would you qualify the return to scale? Oh, okay, so this is actually part C. We've already done it. Part C is asking us how we would uh, classify the returns to scale of this function. And as we talked about, that's constant returns. So now let's take a look at part D. Now we have to write this function as a relation between output per worker and capital per worker. Okay, that's easy enough. This is the overall scenario in the economy. Now we want to do this in terms of each worker. So we don't care how much production there is in the economy. What we want to find out is how much production is there for each worker. So what we do is we divide everything by n. k by n plus 2n by n. And what this will give us, remember y, is equal to k plus 2. And this is our uh, production function in per unit terms. This is basically output per worker. And this is uh, capital per worker. That was part D. Part E. Suppose k by n is 2. We have to find out what's the value of y by n. Okay. Easy enough. I mean, uh, we already have this. Oh, sorry. And we know k by n is 2, which is this small k or big K by N. So Y equals to 2 plus 2 equals to 4. And that is it. So basically when, once again, think of the economic implication. What does this mean? It means that when capital Per worker is two. Output per worker in the economy is four. Mathematically, this is very easy, but at every step, make sure you understand the economic implications of what's going on. That was part E, I suppose. Only E isn't done. We've done first part of E. Next part is what happens to Y by N if K by N is double. Okay. So K by N we knew was 2. Now suppose it becomes 4. Then what will happen to output? Let's call it Y prime. So 4 plus 2 is 6. So effectively, once again, mathematically very easy. Economically, what does this mean? What this means is that when capital for worker goes up, up for worker also 
so close up. Okay, so what's the takeaway from this effect? I mean, we knew the takeaway already, which is that as we increase uh, the capital stock in the economy, as each worker has more capital, more machines and equipments to work with, their output goes up. As small k goes up, small y goes up. So that's the end of part E. Let's see what else is there. Part F. Just the relation between output per worker and capital per worker exhibit the same return to scale as the above production function. Okay, so up here, what we had seen is that when the inputs tripled, the output also tripled. Or effectively, we can say that when inputs in increased x times, x can be any real number, outputs also increased by x times and as a result we could say that this is constant returns to scale what we have to find out is if the same relationship holds for the per worker uh, equation so we know that uh, this exhibits constant returns to scale what we want to find out is whether this also exhibits constant returns to scale what we know is that when k was 2, y was 4, and when k was 4, when k doubled, y increased, of course, but it did not double, it increased by 6. So we've doubled the input, but the output has increased, but not by that much. It hasn't become 8, it has only increased by 50%. So this is called decreasing return returns to scale or effectively DRS. What that means is that when we increase the input, the outputs increase, but by a less amount, less degree, lesser degree. So one thing I'm going to leave for you guys to figure out is why. Okay. Not just mathematically, think about this economically. Why does the total function exhibit CRS and the per worker function exhibit DRS? So why does this happen? Think about it. You guys should be able to figure that out. And actually that's part G if you look at it. What is the difference between the two functions? I mean, mathematically, one is CRS, one is DRS, but think of the economic intuition. Why are they different? Why do we get two sorts of returns? And part H, plot the relation between output per worker and capital per worker. Okay, if we were to plot the relationship, uh, so we will have capital here, output here, uh, the equation is y is k plus 2. So this is what we are going to get. And the question, next part of the question is how does the shape of the relation between the two compare with figure 10.4? Okay. So in 10.4, I'm not going back there, but in 10.4, if I remember correctly, what we had seen was something like this, okay? And the main difference between these two is that this exhibit a constant change. Every time we increase k, the increase in y is same. So the slope is uh, constant. Uh, but what we had seen in 10.4 and during the video lectures is that every time we increase k, y 
still increase, of course, but by a lesser and lesser amount. See, so the slope is decreasing. Effectively, what we will have is that as k keep increasing, y will increase, but at a lesser. Uh, so once again, think about why. That's not part of the question. H does not ask for why this happens, but think about it. Think of the example I gave in the video lecture about just giving everyone laptops and then giving everyone two laptops, giving everyone three laptops, and what happens? And then think about which is more realistic, this or this. Okay. Uh, so that's it. that's it for uh, 10. As I said, we're not going to spend too much time behind it. Uh, and no assignment from chapter 10. In the next video, we're going to move on to chapter 11, which is a lot more interesting chapter.